I just have been looking at my camera and I always notice one thing when I record my videos. I just want to touch on this before I start. I always wear a black or white plain t-shirt when I do this. Apart from the one where I wore the Michael Jordan one, but I always wear a black and white plain t-shirt. So maybe I need to change it up. And after I stop recording this, I'm going to go and put another bit of clothing on to make it a little bit more colourful. The second point I want to make is that Declan Rice, and this goes out to you, mate. Love you and I respect what you did for West Ham. But your side lost to a team in France a couple of days ago while West Ham has just gone 17 games unbeaten in Europe and broken a British footballing record. You will come to regret the day you jo join North London, mate. Because when you go a few seasons without winning a trophy and West Ham's probably got a couple in the bag, or I don't know, I hope they do anyway, you're going to come to regret it, mate. We don't need any more basmati milli buns because we've got Mexican fried rice in our team. We've got potato salad back and popular on the shelves again. We've got a man with a steel head who eats potato salad dominating our midfield right now. We've got a Ghanaian superstar who reminds me of that 2005-2006 Messi-style dribbles where he scored all them goals. You know, it's like Messi, 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 go that kind of thing. But we got that in the form of a man from Ghana. We've got a world-class midfielder in Lucas Paqueta. And the man has a massive car collection right now, isn't it? Because everyone's selling their cars to him. He's got so many cars right now, yeah? It literally looks like a traffic jam all the way from his house to here. It looks like Tunbridge Wells and all that, mate. What I'm trying to say to you, Declan, is you signed for Arsenal thinking you'd win a lot of trophies and all that, mate. And I don't blame you for it. But West Ham is, and always will be, absolutely massive. This is black, but it's got a motif on it, you see. It's got a motif on it, so it doesn't count as plain black. And this is actually one of my favourite sweaters. It's got a lot of, uh, shall we say, retro to it. So I like wearing it. So I thought I'd make the change. But it's an aftermath. And I always do it a day late because uh, time issues. But the aftermath is coming up. It finished. SC Freiburg 1, West Ham United 2. At Stadium and Wolfswingle. Really bad name to call your stadium because Freiburg had their pants pulled down and everybody saw how small it was. Your stadium name alone, Freiburg, by the way, is going to get you like laughed at. Everyone's going to say your stadium's not got a Viagra uh, intake or whatever because I'm Wolfswinkle. Your stadium's got Wolfswinkle in it, you know what I'm saying? It's got like a reference to a man's parts and all that. So, you know, West Ham being massive, it's bigger. Why am I talking about um, privates? Let's just stop right there. I want to just say this about West Ham. We've broken a record by this going unbeaten. We've done well for ourselves right now. And also, we're just dominating Europe again. Now that we're top of our group with two wins out of two, we're definitely looking a lot more comfortable and the qualification for the next round is going to become a lot more easier down the line. I remember the only game we did loss that we did lose rather in this unbeaten run. Wasn't it that game where we played all the kids against Zagreb and no one really cared at that point anyway. But that wasn't a big worry. West Ham played really well in this actually. And although there were a few shaky moments and some individuals may not have reached their full capacity in the game, we played to a point where we could get it done. And so many individuals just impress me. It happens every week in these videos. So many individuals impress me in the games anyway. But so many have to be talked about that we can't just ignore it. So let's start out with this team lineup, shall we? Fabianski was in goal. Defence of Dinos Aguerd Kera, who was looking like a left back. So far, four nails, well, so, go, so far going like a bit of a wing back. Four nails out like winger, interchanging with Pakita. James Ward Prass in the middle. Uh, Kudus and Bowen led the attack. Kudus has to get more starts in the Premier League. I've been saying it for too long now. We appeared to be very top on possession and we made it 1-0 within the opening 10. Bowen got directly down the channel to cross the box. Pakatar jumped the highest to head home. It was quite a good aerial goal from him. The man's leading all Brazilians in statistics in Europe this season as well. So that's another thing that he can be proud of. Kudus then came very close. He dribbled through and the keeper had his hands to parry it. The man literally must have had Butterfingers. You remember that show that used to be on CITV, Butterfingers? 
the geezer in that actually looked like a world-class goalkeeper prior. Well, not even prior, because I don't think he was alive. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is the geezer in that show, even though it wasn't real, could have done a better job probably than Freiburg's keeper. Freiburg's keeper couldn't even parry a ball correctly. And then when it was like this, like hit it, trickle, 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 trickle like that, going away. Like, if you're going to be a goalkeeper, at least catch it. And he couldn't do that. <laughs> And he nearly, nearly allowed Kudas to score. Kudas, by the way, is running is so precise and so good. Bombs it through the field. Literally sprints it. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog, but a little bit slower and not blue. Man's just going straight through the middle, weaving in and out like that and keeping the ball close to his feet. We've got a real player on our hands here. But when we were very dominant... Freiburg couldn't make any attacks and they lost the ball far too often. Mavropanos went down with something on his face. Pakatar called for a penalty that wasn't given. Did Junior Amadou foul him? I don't even know. Freiburg weren't making it hard though. They didn't create enough really and it got a little bit boring as the game went on but West Ham at least tried to threaten a bit. Pakatar had a goal ruled out for offside so he didn't get his brace. Fornals again, I've got to say this, it wasn't all at the races. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just like uh, John McCurick, you know, he's not at races anymore, really. Partly because McCurick's dead. But that's the point. He wasn't really there today. Freiburg equalised at the start of the second half. And just so you know, we've got to, got to touch on this. Freiburg equalising just shows how bad West Ham is at not seeing through a lead sometimes in the second half. Because usually we, get, we start the second half... And it comes to bits. We concede a goal. We had two double saves from Fabianski leading up to this. And then Roland Shalai smashed the ball into the net. Doan came on actually at half time. The Japanese international. He caused some problems. His running gave them a little bit more energy. But anyways, after half time, we always concede. Freiburg also lashed it over from very close range. And we really got off the hook there. Really got off the hook. I don't know how they missed it. We just took it down a gear in the second half and didn't look as good at that point. Fornals wasn't the best and he couldn't keep the ball. I was begging for him to come off. Bowen and Kudas still carried the attack though. And even Bowen wasn't, in my opinion, at his absolute best. But Kudas did really well to carry the attack though. He should have scored. He came so narrowly close a few times. 2-1 came though, again headed in off the crossbar. And it was a James Ward-Prowse assist. Eight goal contributions in eight yeah, eight games for James Ward-Prowse. Why is that man not in the England team? Why is casualty Holby City Calvin Phillips constantly in the team? That's where he belongs on that set. Do you know what I'm saying? That man belongs on, uh, I'm not sure even what other shows do, Doctors. Uh, yeah, that good doctor guy. And get treated by uh, Freddie Highmore, whatever he was called. Whatever good doctor is. Named. That's where Calvin Phillips belongs. You belong in a room with that guy. You don't belong on the England pitch, mate. James Ward-Prowse has done way more to get in the England team than Phillips has. And, it's, and given what I just said there, it is absolutely shambolic that he's not getting a sniff. Bowen finally got called up, though, but he's not going to be starting, is he? Bowen's not going to start. And after all the games that have gone on and everything he's done in games, it's ridiculous. Ward-Prowse deserves an England call-up. End of. With substitutions were made. Four and hours off for Socek. Emerson on for Kura. Kura dragged another shot wide. He was replaced by Ben Rama right after. Pakatar's amazing vision with passing. Set Bowen right through on a one-on-one, -on -one, but he missed. He might have hesitated at the last second. I don't know. Mabama came on for Pakatar late. Ings came on for Ward-Prowse. It finished 2-1. Great result. Now I want to talk about something Mark Goldbridge said, where he doesn't think Jared Bowen's had a good season. Saying things like, oh yeah, you know, Bowen's not playing very well. Bowen's not playing well right now. Are you blind? The man's insufferable saying things like this. Oh, Bowen's useless. Bowen's useless. Bowen's useless. No, he's not. Better than bloody Sancho even before Sancho kicked off. He's got better stats than Rashford this season. We're not even going to have a discussion, Mark. And that's not even your real name. Um, Southgate, mate. You should have gone after the Euros. You have all them world-class players at your helm and you are still choosing all the crap to play in the England team. It is an injustice. It is bad. But hey-ho, I don't really care.
And as I said to Declan Rice at the start of the video, you guys lost the other day. We're still winning. Do you think it was still the right decision to leave West Ham? I'm glad you did in a way, though, because we've got Alvarez, and he was class, and he was class throughout the majority of the season anyway. We've got Ward Prowse, we've got Pakatar, we've got Kudus. Thank you very much for going to North London, mate. May you never win a trophy while West Ham progress.